Dear fellow conservatives, patriots, and nationalists, before I start, I feel I need to start with an apology. I know uh, it's a bit strange, a bit atypical, but I would like to apologize for some well-known Belgium export products. No, not for chocolate, beer, waffles, or french fries. No, my friends, from the bottom of my heart, I would like to apologize for the European officials that my country has delivered in the past. I would like to apologize. I would like to apologize for both unelected presidents of the European Council, Mr. Herman van Rompuy and Mr. Charles Michel. But most of all, I feel the strong need, the strong urge to apologize for the worst political export product of them all, the liberal wingback Guy Verhofstadt. Please, please accept my profound apologies and believe me when I tell you that those characters are in no way a representative of my people, the Flemish people. The three export products that I mentioned have certain things in common. They were all Prime Minister of Belgium in a past life and they all pursued a career in the European institutions. But the most important thing that they have in common is that they were not only voted away by the people of my country, but some of them were even chased away. And at the end, at the end, each of them left our country worse behind in a worse condition when they left office. Decent people like you, and me would lower their tone of voice and feel an immense embarrassment. But not people like Charles Michel. They are still lecturing popular heads of state. People like Guy Verhofstadt make themselves feel important at the expense of the Hungarian people. How dare they? People who lost elections in their own country are feeling the need to lecture those who actually win election after election after election in theirs. People who are only backed by an unelected EU officials have no right whatsoever to lecture Mr. Viktor Orban, who is backed by the overwhelming majority of the Hungarian people. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Mr. Santo and the Center of Fundamental Rights to bring all these conservative, patriotic and nationalistic voices together. And I also want to express my deep appreciation for Matt Schlapp and his team to bring CPAC, not only to Europe, but specifically to Hungary. It is no wonder, my friends, that us conservatives find ourselves together here in Budapest of all places. At this moment, Hungary is the heart of the conservative resistance against the globalist agenda. If there is a conservative revival in Europe, it is without any doubt the most visible here in Hungary. What a brave people you are, my Hungarian friends. You've sent a message throughout Europe and to the rest of the world. You've shown them clearly that this is your land and nobody can tell you how you have to live your lives and how you are going to sculpture your future. It's truly impressive. If nothing less, it's a true inspiration for us all. You Hungarians are the freedom fighters of the 21st century. My friends, us conservatives should be well aware about the strategy of the globalists. We have the obligation to expose the doctrine of the elite of the European Union. Former President of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, for once not a Belgian, even explained it in a rare flash of honesty how they do it, and I quote, most people don't understand how things are decided in the European Union, and if no one kicks up a fuss, we continue step by step until there's no turning back, end of quote. And that's exactly what they do, my friends. If our beloved continent, Europe, experienced difficult times, their solution is simple, and they always say the same thing. We need more political union, we need more power to the European Union. And if our continent, Europe, experienced prosperous times, 
you hear the same thing. We need more political union, more power to the European Union. So it doesn't matter if the times are good or the times are bad. At the end, the result in their minds is always the same. More power, more centralization, more European Union and less sovereignty for nation states. The confronting reality is, my friends, the European Union has never been the solution. They had no solution for the financial crisis. They had no solution for the immigration crisis. They had no solution for the health crisis. And as of today, they don't have a solution for the current energy crisis. The current European Union is not a solution, but a problem. So we need less centralization to, and less power to the European Union, but instead we need more free and sovereign nations that cooperate on their own terms. Because, ask yourself a question. When did our continent experience the darkest of times? I'll tell you. When imperialists tried to unify our Europe with force against the will of the people. When globalists denied the unique identity of the European people and destroyed national sovereignty. Where it was Nazi Germany, where it was Soviet Russia, or European Union today. And when did Europe flourish, my friends? when free and proud nations respected each other's identity and sovereignty, when we had a healthy economic cooperation, competition with mutual respect. The globalist idea of one size fits all has never worked for Europe and will never work for our Europe. Marxists, imperialists, globalists, they all have a worldview based only on economics. They see mankind as a, as a universal economic product. They believe in social engineered societies and they want to destroy organic formed societies and traditions that grew throughout your history. On every level in Western Europe, we have heard it. History should be rewritten. Statues of, of heroes should be removed. Streets names replaced. Christmas markets are now called winter markets. markets our traditions are too old-fashioned and outdated. It's a stunning, a stunning to say, but just simply defending the fact that there are only two sexes, male and female, could be considered as revolutionary these days. We should all accept the artificial concept of gender. And I'm glad I don't have to do it here, but in some places you're forced now to ask, what are your pronouns? Striving to be as woke and as politically correct as possible has become their main goal. Everything that doesn't fit that, that, that agenda is being stamped as fake news. The statement, men cannot have babies, is being called fake news by the same people. Go figure out. My friends, it is clear that more than ever, we need an antidote against this destructive force. And that antidote, my friends, is here, here in Hungary, where common sense reigns and enjoys the full support of the people. But that, that antidote needs to be administered to the rest of Europe. And that is why I'm glad to see so many of you here, fellow American and European conservatives. We are the antidote. We are the antidote for globalism and multiculturalism. We are the antidote for woke madness and self-hate. And if we stand here, shoulder to shoulder, we stand for something bigger, something more important than just winning the next election. We stand here to preserve what is good out of respect for our parents and our grandparents. And we stand here for a better future for our children and our grandchildren. We, my friends, and please remember that for the rest of your life, we are the good guys. Never forget that. We should never be afraid to claim the moral high ground because we're already on the moral high ground. We defend things are worth fighting for. We defend freedom of speech. We defend the nation state. We defend Christianity. We defend traditional families. We defend our people, our culture, our heritage. And never forget, if we don't do it, our, our children will never have the possibility to do it. Tradition and conservatism. <laughs> Tradition and conservatism 
are not the worship of ashes, but the preservation of fire. I thank you very much. Have a nice day.